Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Star Sector. So, uh, last episode we had um, basically just hunted some pirates. Oh boy, I just jumped through that and I was warned that there was a massive fleet on the other side that was hostile and I kind of ignored it. Um, yes, so what I was going to say, I uh, hunted some pirates, I did some bounties, and um, I think at this point... I am trying to make up a decent amount of money so that I can start to colonize, but then I also need to survey for colonies. Uh, wow, the mission I wanted to go do is no longer available. I was kind of wondering where it went. All right, fine. Well, if that's the case, so be it. Let's go survey and explore some more. Now, last episode, I did mention about Persephone, so we could head all over there at some point. But um, right now, I'm going to um, I'm going to bankroll my surveying efforts. Uh, hopefully, they will pay off. So this system is not going to have much. I'm kind of wasting fuel by jumping in and out. Now, the reason why I'm doing all the surveying now is the smaller the fleet you have, the cheaper it is to do exploration. Now, it's entirely possible to park your fleet and go smaller and solo but that's not necessarily the best idea because if you uh, enter a fight and you have just like your own primary ship like oh here's a perfect example so there's a unidentified pirate fleet sitting right here at the fringe point oh and actually they're running for me so I guess they perceive me to be more of a threat to them than they are to me but uh, yeah you can get spawn camped essentially uh, pretty easily if you aren't that careful so I'm just, ooh, this, here we go. So there is a warning beacon here. A warning beacon um, lets you know that the system isn't exactly friendly or safe, but this system has six planets or five planets and a star. Uh, so this prospector here, I think needs fuel. It was, um, when I was passing by, it had a uh, emergency beacon. So yeah, we're gonna accept the comms request, uh, give them a little bit of fuel, and let them on their way. Now this uh, system does have some pretty good worlds. It has desert worlds, which are pretty high uh, habitability, generally speaking. Uh, but it's also gonna, because there was a warning beacon, uh, it's also going to be a rough world. Uh, so this has a hazard rating of 125, which is uh, pretty reasonable for a first colony. Widespread ruins. So you wouldn't really want to put a colony here because there's no industry that is gonna be decent. Uh, it doesn't have um, mining, it doesn't have uh, farmable land or anything. It just has ruins, and the ruins has a Locus SRM launcher, which uh, is a huge amount of, yeah, this is for like a missile ship, I guess. I'll keep that, and then the rest of this I'll take. But I'm not going to establish a colony here, because there's just not much to establish. There's uh, some freighters and dormant fleets and stuff sitting around this planet. Uh, so these little remnant fleets are probably going to leave me alone given how huge my ship is. But they're going to keep following me around. Ooh, ah, there's that Tarsus freighter that got blown up and marooned. Had a, a decent amount of um, materials in it. Now keep in mind that um, this ore, for instance, is 10 units, 10 credits a piece. Whereas like this one survey data is 5,000. Um, so when you're when you're figuring out like what to keep, what to sell, uh, keep in mind the credit value. Yeah, there is a bunch of uh, bunch of remnant fleets in this sector. My fleet is big enough that they are dissuaded from attacking me. So a hundred is really low hazard rating, and there are some poor farmland here. So if I was to, and moderate ore deposit, deposits. So if I was to colonize um, this system, uh, this would be a decent mining place and a uh, okay farmland. Farmland is so rare that even poor farmland might be worth colonizing, but um, let's explore the ruins. Not much there, just a little gamma core. 
All right, there's yet another desert world. This system is full of desert worlds. And then there's two barren worlds as well. Uh, they'd be worth uh, searching anyway. Also, another thing that you want to take a look for, a lookout for, is stable locations. In stable locations, you can build things that help benefit your colony. Uh, so here, there's a another 175. That's a little high on the uh, rating. Uh, but it has very, very good mining. If you explore the ruins, we've got a maximum burden drive level 2 drive spec. That's really going to be handy. And uh, what weapon? Heavy mortar? Eh, those are, those are kind of blah. Right, let's learn the drive spec. And what else is there? There's uh, orbital habitat. And there were some harvested organs in there. Gross. And then we salvaged it for Gamma Core. And recreational drugs. There's also a debris field that was created, generated by sur surveying that. And then a mining station. Uh, corrupted nanoforge. A operation center, which gives you increased command point recovery rate. Another Gamma Core. I'm um, also, as you can see, up over my cargo capacity. So I'm going to ditch my organics. And it looks like that, oh geez, let's get out of here, emergency burn. So that was a huge fleet that almost just jumped me. Um, so if I did want to colonize here, I'd have to have a fleet capable of dealing with that giant fleet. Now fortunately for me, giant fleets tend to be slow. But I was ready on the emergency burn, so they're right here. They're right outside of my um, my radar contact. Got to be careful about that. Uh, research station and sensor ray. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. So sensor ray, I'm going to claim and bring it back online. Uh, and that will give me a little bit wider uh, sensor range. Let's survey here. Ultra rare. So, so this system... Um, would it be a pretty decent system to set up mining operations? But uh, in terms of farming, it would be very meh. Alright, and then there's one last world I hadn't surveyed. And I'd like to get over to that research station that is orbiting the sun. In fact, I'd like to... This this uh, this system ten, seems to be very bountiful, so... Um, more ore... A ship I can recover, a standard shuttle. I'm going to recover this one because it wasn't so badly damaged. And salvaging stuff. Alright, let's try to do a loop, keeping a close eye out for the um, massive fleet. Now that. Oh, there's a derelict ship here, a kite class shuttle. The massive fleet um, has a really big. Um, oh, I can recover that one too. A really large sort of um, sensor signature, so they're really, really easy to spot, um, and they're slower because they're so massive. And they seem to be camping the research station. So I, they, they're trying to intercept me right now. Uh, and they're definitely pirates, they're not remnants. I can tell by the types of ships that they have. So I'm going to go into the research station. Uh, wow, a lot of stuff. So we got a beta core, so this was worth it. Uh, auto pulse lasers are pretty good. I uh, like them. Uh, another gamma core. Hammer barrage. A heavy burst laser, which is a pretty good point defense. Proximity charge launchers I don't much care for, but the heavy burst later on I'm going to set aside. Salamander MRM pods, which uh, I always like because they're um, ammo free. Antimatter Blaster. The antimatter Blasters do a lot of damage, but they're really, really short range, which is kind of their issue. Um, all the regular stuff. Longbow Fighters. High Resolution Sensors. Missile Spec. Um, makeshift Generators. I'm going to learn all this. Recovery Shuttles. Uh, operation Centers. I think I already have one of those. So that's my second one. And then Cobra Ring Blueprint. I already know. And Perdition bl Wing Blueprint. I already know. So... When you sell these, uh, as I said last episode, when you sell those blueprints to the wrong people, uh, what can end up happening is you give them the ability to make whatever that is. 
Shield conversion to front blueprint. Uh, that's not what I meant to hit. But um, they tried to interdict me, but I was uh, I'm too too squirrely for them. I don't really want to get into that fight because there's really not much to gain and a lot to lose. So we've surveyed everything here, and I would say that this is a pretty decent um, first colony. It is a pretty, or, or not even first colony, pretty decent colony spot. It just requires us to clear away some of the really scary um, enemies. So, that's good to know. Fearsome engine. Keep an eye on that. For later. Alright, so I'm charting a course. Let's, before I do that, learn... All these. Um, the Cobra Wing... Perdition Wing, I don't want to give that to anyone. I'm also harboring some illicit... Um, stuff like the harvested organs and the recreational drugs so I gotta be careful not to be caught uh, by local authorities with that stuff so basically if someone wants to talk to me don't let them uh, let's see I'm gonna go to Marioth or whatever the Persian world because uh, I'm likely to sell everything on the black market and I don't want to piss off my potential enemies Oh, you're a smuggler. Whoa, the Tritachion. They are after you hard. All right, repair my ships, and let's go to Black Market. So, I don't want to sell any of this stuff. I don't want to sell blueprints to anyone. I'm going to keep that for myself. Uh, we can sell some of the heavy machinery. And these aren't blueprints, right? No, they're not blueprints. All right, so 129,000. That's pretty good. Well, hold on. Let me... Uh, I'm going to reconsider it. I might want to change out what fighters I'm rolling with. I'm going to sell everything else, but keep the fighters. Buy their supplies. All right, so let's check refit and go down to Talon here. Um, so we have torpedo bombers and light mortar, um, flare launching fighters. The trident torpedo bombers are even better, but, um, that's on the black market. I don't own those. Longbow bombers. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to keep the... Well, no, I'm actually going to go down to Lombo Bombers. And that would allow... Um, this ship here... To become... More something. Uh, more maneuverable or faster or something like that. Or even wider shields. So I'm going to give it a little bit wider shields. Uh, another thing I could consider is... I have a lot of additional uh, weapons. So... I could be outfitting either my ship or other ships with the improved weapons. Um, for instance, I have a Graviton Beam and a Heavy Burst Laser. So if we go over to Tragic Hysteria, uh, well, they're rocking an Ion Beam. If we go over to Glitch here, this Pulse Laser, I could ditch Pulse Laser for a Heavy Burst Laser or uh, the Graviton Beam. Um, and hook it up with a Graviton Beam. I also didn't really do uh, these. I, I gotta say these aren't the best designed ships. Uh, one, two, okay, four, no, five. All right, these aren't amazing ships. This isn't exactly what I would want to put on it, but uh, they'll do. They will do indeed. I don't want your little trade contracts. Uh, there is the pirate base over here. The Lost Acropolis. And you could talk to them. Um, but, you know. It, they're not going to really want to talk to me. I'm not 
on friendly terms with the pirates. I've been hunting them, in fact. Now talking to the Tritachion, I'm going to talk to the base director and turn in AI cores. And I'm going to select the AI cores. So I want to turn in um, my beta and my gamma, but keep the alpha. The alpha core is just too precious and too rare. Uh, so they are turned in. Um, my relationship with them has gone up as a result, and I've made a lot of money. So now, as you can see, I have uh, about a half a million credits, um, and that should allow me to bankroll some additional ships. Uh, pulse, ah, I'll put the pulse laser away. Uh, you know, you're not obligated to sell everything you find, uh, and sometimes it works to your benefit not to. So, try Tachyon. Let's see what I could buy here. So, uh, they're selling me just a kite. Never mind. Civilian transports. Hmm. Nothing but trash in this system. I'll check back at the, uh, the last station. Hmm, they have more condors. If I'd lie, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll buy one more condor. They're relatively easy to outfit. And let's refit this last condor. So I'm going to call this condor. Oh, I also want to sell the ships that I recovered. I don't need it. So the bomber bay and the fighter bay that I already have. Uh, let's hook up point defense. Rail guns and a pylum launcher, and then set some capacitors and vents. Uh, pylum launcher, yeah, all on different weapon groups. That's fine, and that's all set. All right, now let's sell those um, the ships I don't need. Selling on black market, selling this, it's barely worth it, as you can see. That's why when you recover ships, if they're really teeny ships, they're really not going to be worth much. So we have, we have Tragic Hysteria, Glitch, Talon, Condor, Gaze into the Void, Radamanthine, and uh, that's what we're currently rolling with. Mm, I like it. I mean, I, I definitely think we need to add to this to really be battle ready, but uh, this is a good start. Buy a little bit more supplies. And... I'm gonna go off. Now with the money I have, I could actually start considering to colonize. If I'm really in a pinch, I could sell my um, pristine nanoforge. That's worth half a million as well. But as I said, I, I would preferably hold on to it. Um, at a certain duration, uh, eventually what ends up happening is the stipend that you get from the uh, academy here will run up. So it's gonna run up in 21 months, which means in 21 months, um, I won't be making like a daily stipend. I will be losing money. Oh man, I exit my exit point was right on a storm. That's cheap. Oh, oh, one other thing I uh, forgot to do. Let's go down and jump back in here. I need to refit real quick. I have the ability to have I have some new um, station or uh, ship mods that I have not yet uh, installed, and I would really like to. So refit. So on my own ship, let's check my ship first. I still want the um, plasma cannon. Um, I think the yeah. I guess I'll have dual point defense. I don't particularly like getting hit by missiles. But let's remove all my capacitors and vents and see what else I can add to here. So, turret gyros, I don't really need that much. Uh, I'm not, the augmented drive field would be useful for my big ships that are slowing my fleet down. So I don't need to worry about that either. Um, hmm. What is it that I wanted? Advanced optics increase the range of beam weapons uh, with 
it integrates with integrated targeting unit. I guess I don't have the integrated targeting unit. I thought I did. I thought I had that already, but maybe I didn't. So never mind. That my my primary ship is really not going to change much, but I'm going to do 2020 so that I'm able to vent quick as well. Um, now I have a bunch of um, weapons that I could potentially install on Gaze into the Void here. So let's see. The Storm Needler and the, actually, mm, Gauss Cannons. So these Gauss Cannons are really, really good anti-shield weapons. Um, as is the Storm Needler. The, um, the Gauss Cannon, the Storm Needler is higher DPS by a long shot, but um, the Gauss Cannons have longer range. My guess is, I'm not going to need range. So I'm going to go Needler and... Uh, ooh. I want some anti-armor, but I don't really... I don't really have a lot of anti-armor weapons built up. Which is really the problem. Uh, I had some thumpers on the side here. I have so many... So I'll do f dual flak uh, cannons. And that will shred... Uh, that will shred any um, annoying fighters that are coming. I might what I end up doing is uh, is not even worrying about okay so they have a glitched sensor ray oh weapon range in combat is reduced okay that's a real problem um, I might actually restore this even though it's expensive so I don't have that glitched array because I'm, I, it's, it's, it will be. I'm pretty sure it will be fairly rare for me to find. Um, something better. All right, so rail. I'm gonna put rail guns on the side here, and rail guns in the front. And right in the middle here, uh, assault gun, and then we'll consider adding some new mods here. So, what is what ship? I gotta figure out what ship is causing me not to be able to travel faster. Is I think the main concern. So let's see. Burn eight. Seven, so it's. I think it's my sumo, and maybe my take or two. No, it's. I think it's just the sumo. So let's refit the sumo. Forget the injector, and let's. Where is that? Oh. Um, I can't do things here anymore. They are a little pissed because they found suspicious cargo, which is, I'm assuming, my uh, AI core. Oopsie. I'm gonna go to the independent world to do my refitting as the Perseans are uh, a little pissed at me. That's all right, I don't really care. Uh, refit, let's get rid of the subsystems and add in augmented drive. Now before I do anything else, Fleet. So max burn seven. Hmm. Trying to figure out why I'm not able to go faster. Forget the cargo holds and do. We'll try subsystems. I think it's not calculating the the speed, the max burn speed.
right, let's hit F1. So the tanker and gaze into the void is what's holding me up. Um, sumo is... Oh, sumo's way too fast. All right, let's fix this. So we'll put the expanded cargo here as well. And then I think what I'll do is the nav relay. Okay. Gaze in the void. You, my good friend, are going to need to get faster. So I don't think there's militarized subsystems for you um, because you're not a civilian ship. So augment, augmented field drive. But that is very, very expensive, so we might want... No, actually, you know, we're good. I'm going to have you have very little flux capacity, but or flux, a lot, very little dissipation. And then the tanker was the other one. And... The... Man, every time I go in here, I'm like blind. The augmented drive fields, and... Hmm. Unstable injector in case we get chased. So now my burn speed, as you can see, is 20, which is the max uh, because everyone's fast enough. So tankers, gaze, tragic, and glitch. Tragic and glitch is fast. Uh, gaze is faster. Okay, we're good. We're good. Now I do have some weapons to refit. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to go get into trouble. Now I've redesigned this. Um, so my fleet here. Let's go move some ships around. So Radamanthi is going to be in front. My tanker, sumo, and civilian transport in back. Uh, gaze, tragic, glitch, condors, and then chitons. That's a little bit better order. Um... So, what do we want to do to you? You have stormy... Uh, yeah, so this this is a pretty hefty gunship. I don't think I need that kind of flak, but, you know, it should be fine. Uh, but I do need to do weapon groups here. So, Goss and Storm Needler on different groups. Flak cannons and uh, dual machine guns on another. Rail on a third and assault gun on a fourth or fifth. That's fine. Uh, tragic... Is there anything I can do to you? Oh, so these uh, these ships here, um, one way to improve them a bit, let's forget that blaster there, is to give them the um, advanced optics because they have beam weapons and this will allow the beams to go even further, uh, which will make it really difficult for um, the enemies to be able to uh, do much against the ship. So I have a bunch of laser PDs, which is honestly like not great. But uh, the the idea of these Shrike class ships, the Shrike class ships are a little um, a little squishy. So what what we're able to do here is to um, to have it have a very very long ion beam. So this this one that uh, that Max Power is controlling helps to or works to shut down uh, enemy ships reasonably well. And then this is a graviton beamed one. Uh, let's go ahead and add some of the advanced optics to that as well. And weapon group that. It's already been weapon grouped. Okay, that looks fine. I think we're good. So, for trade groups, Devastator Cannon, we'll put that away. Uh, thumpers, Thumpers aren't that rare, but I'm going to keep them. And then I'll black market the rest of this stuff. What was that? Antimatter Velocity? Yeah, I'll black market that. It's not a lot of money. All right, that took a while. But now we're traveling underway. Perseans like us a little bit less. Which is... Uh, 
I don't know, a bit of a problem. We're not totally hostile with them yet. If you go into factions, you can tell what your relationship is. So Luddock Path hates me. Uh, pirates very, very, very much hate me. And then the Persian League is only like minus one. It's not that bad. There's some debris fields here from uh, Fight. I mean, it's not illegal to salvage it, so I'm just going to salvage this. It's free loot. And even in looting that debris field, <laughs> I actually leveled up. So, uh, what do I want here? I want... No, I definitely don't want that. I want to get a uh, chance of malfunctions when that low combat readiness. Done. And let's start poking around for colonizable planets. So the advance, the extra burn speed here is quite nice. I'm uh, moving really, really fast. All right, so this system om almost assuredly it won't be colonizable because it doesn't have a lot of planets on it. It doesn't mean I shouldn't look. Two little barren worlds. I'm just going to hop out of here. I'm not even going to waste my time surveying. Um, like I said, you don't want to travel too far from the center core because when you have... Let me turn off my transponder. When you are managing uh, these... Really? Just a planetless uh, system? Oh, no, there's a planet there. When you're managing your starter world, your starter world will come under attack. Um, not all the time, but often... Oh, there is a Terran world there. That's very cool. There's definitely not enough um, planets here that are decent to bother colonizing the Terran world, but the Terran world... Terran is like the most... The, usually the least... Or the most habitable, I should say. The least um, hazard rating. So actually, one of those desert worlds had a lower hazard rating. This one has a hazard rating that's higher because it has really high gravity. Really high gravity also makes the world less accessible, which makes trade more difficult. But uh, 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 abundant organics, so for organic production, uh, moderate ore, ultra-rich ore, bountiful farmland. This is a phenomenal world right here. Um, didn't have any ruins, but yeah. That is a phenomenal world. And as you can see, the Survey 5 class data reflects that it is worth three, uh, 30k. People would want to know about this world. So if I was to create a system here, I would probably turn that into a um, into farmland. Because it, it was... When, when you um, create planets, when you colonize planets, you have to think about what industry they're going to run. And you're not, you can't run infinite industries on one planet. You're restricted to just one or two types of industry. And to run a good empire, you're going to need, you know, a breadbasket. You're going to need a, um, uh, so there's a little bit of ore there. Uh, you're also going to need, um, some other worlds like a, uh, a mining world for materials, maybe, maybe a manufacturing world. There's a few different types of worlds that you're going to be required to have. At the very minimum, you want, in the same system, you want, like, a breadbasket world and a, um, a mining world. So, what was the, uh, hazard rating here? Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Of 200, yeah, I mean, if these barren worlds were a little bit nicer... It might be decent. Oh, a supply cache. Nice. I love happening upon supply caches. So I think this system has uh, maybe about equal potential to the um, fearsome engine that I found before. But I'm not jumping, I'm not snapping at the bit for either of these. They're, they're good, but they're not amazing. Uh, that Terran world is is pretty awesome, but it's um, the lower accessibility and the fact that it, there's no other good planets in the system make it a little undesirable. Now here's a toxic world and an arid world. This toxic world has really high um, 
high uh, hazard rating. This area will probably has a lower hazard rating. 100. Okay, that's particularly low. There is adequate farmland and urban, orga, uh, abundant organics and moderate ore. Widespread ruins. So let's spelunk through the ruins. Uh, it gave us integrated point defense AI. So it makes our point defense more useful. Uh, if we learn that, which of course I will. I'm not going to establish a colony though. Uh, let's learn that. And let's jump out. As you can see, there's a there's a, some remnants here or there, pretty much everywhere I'm going. Uh, most of their fleets are really small, and um, you know, not gonna not gonna tear me up or anything like that. All right, so the Alpha Mance, there's a uh, there's a distress call originating from it. Uh, usually, that means it's a trap, but not always. Okay, there's a broken ship here. That's oh, and it has a uh, ship captain. Let's see what our ship captain. So it has Souls Zambrano. He's got defensive systems maxed and evasive actions maxed. He's an aggressive captain, so he's not reckless, uh, which is like suicidal. Aggressive is as exactly what you would think, uh, but aggressive plus defensive systems doesn't really make sense. I'm going to dismiss. Oh, I'm going to dismiss him because he's not exactly ideally designed. But um, we rescued him. Right, so what's going on over here? There's a debris field. Salvage a little stuff. Whoever called for the uh, distress here, it's either someone lurking to ambush me or a false alarm or something. I don't know. What's this? Just a kite ship and I have to fly into the corona for it? Oh, a kite ship that had organs on it. So when you're in the corona here, as you can see, um, it reduces the combat readiness of all the ships while you sit in there. So it makes it, you know, it basically chews up more um, of your supplies. And then if you get attacked, your ships are less ready for combat. Okay. I, oop, I didn't mean to do emergency. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what that was about. I didn't really see or find anything. The uh, the emergency signal. So here's a white dwarf system with two planets. Volcanic world and a barren world. Volcanic world's generally pretty good for mining, but they're very inhospitable. Now the hazard rating just makes it very, very expensive to um, operate a colony there. Yeah, abundant and moderate, or uh, that mud skipper that I just salvaged gave me intel on a debris field. Yeah, the other, oh, the average debris field is not worth stopping what you're doing and 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 going to investigate. Minor weapons cache that could be good. Uh, so this gave me a blueprint for the Thunderwing, which I already know, and uh, some basic weapons and armaments. Nothing fancy. I'm running a little low. Uh, not critically, but a little low on supplies, so I'll be able to survey a, another one or two before having to resupply my own self. But as you can see, all of these now in this arm here have been surveyed. Um, now it's possible to go further, like start surveying these, but only maybe when you've surveyed everything else that's close. Uh, as I keep saying, it's very, very ideal to survey close. And the reason being is pirates, anytime you have a colony, it's going to attract, at the very least, it's gonna attract some pirates. And um, until your colony is starting to manufacture support patrol ships to protect the system, uh, you're sort of on the hook to protect your own colonies. 
So unless you want to be constantly raided by whatever is around, uh, you need to have, uh, you know, you, you need your own fleet to be close by so that it can defend it. And if your colony is in the, you know, in the corner of the universe, you're constantly going to be commuting between the core, where all of the trade and all that is, and the edge of the galaxy or whatever. Oh, so I lucked out. There's some ruins here, which had uh, a whole bunch of transplutonic ore. That's kind of lucky. There's going to be some money in that for me. And this is probably the last thing I'm going to be able to survey, given my uh, current... Actually, you know what? Forget it. I'm not even going to survey there. I'm not going to have enough supplies to survey that and then do something else. Like, um... Fly to the nearest system. Oh, that's a Luddick. So, I'm not going to go to a Luddick church uh, system to resupply, because... Uh, even if I'm not hostile with them, when I approach there, they're going to tithe me or essentially shake me down for money. Uh, being in their own systems, you essentially have to bribe them to even move into their systems. And it would be, it would be possible if, let's say, I had no other choice but to resupply there. It'd be possible to go dark and try to enter their system and trade with them, um, with them none the wiser. But there's the larger fleet you have, and the um, the more your uh, your own sense, your your own uh, rather detection range, the harder it would be. So, if you have just one teeny little ship that's like designed to be a smuggler ship, yeah, okay, that's not a problem. But if you are like me, where you have a reasonably sized fleet here, I'm really not going to be able to just snake on in and and and. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Darn. Uh, I'm not going to be able to snake in and, and uh, resupply or anything like that. Alright, so I've resupplied at this Persian world. They're going to get pissed that I uh, black marketed everything, but again, don't care. Uh, was there... I'm not ready to take that mission yet. Uh, mercenaries. Steady, ordinance, and target it. Um, ordinance expertise is not really something I, 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 a skill I like. So I'm going to pass on him. And before I leave here, I'm going to resupply in the black market for a little bit more supplies on this other world. It, as you can see, costs a lot of money to keep your fleet afloat. Um, it's not cheap, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. If there's anything to buy. I didn't check the other one. So I could buy a Mora carrier. That's a larger than a Condor, obviously, carrier. Um... If you ever are curious about the class ship it is, or what kind of systems they have, you can just uh, hit the little uh, question mark there instead of buying it. Uh, they're they're pretty good. They're not my favorite, but they're pretty good. But I don't think I'm going to buy that one specifically. Nope, we're good here. All right, back to sector. I thought I surveyed... Oh no, maybe I surveyed... Yeah, I surveyed something different. Well, that's actually about all the time I have for this episode, guys. So I'm sorry that I didn't get into more battles, but I am trying to find a new home uh, for us to settle into. Uh, so right now, it's between those two sort of decent but unideal um, areas. We've got... Uh, let me remind myself. We've got the Fearsome Engine system. Uh, what it has going for it is it has a lot of planets. That would probably be my first choice because of the uh, quantity of planets. The quantity of planets is a little bit more important than um, having one really nice planet and then a bunch of crummy ones. Um, yeah, or that other system with the one really amazing Terran giant world, but yeah. Uh, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. If you're a patron of mine and would like a uh, 
captain or ship named after you, just let me know. And I hope to uh, see you all. Tune in next time. Adios.